Today we will discuss the use of a special type of plasmid which is known as Ti plasmid as a vector. This Ti plasmid is otherwise called as tumor inducing plasmid. They are considered to be high efficiency plasmid based vectors which are usually used for transferring foreign genes into plant cells. So why? Usually the plasmids are used for transferring genes into bacterial host cells but here the Ti plasmid is used for transferring genes into plant cells. So how this is possible? So for that we should know what is the source of Ti plasmid. Ti plasmid is derived from a bacterium which is called as agrobacterium tumefaciens. It is a gram negative soil bacterium which is pathogenic and it causes crown galls or it leads to the formation of crown galls in dicot plant species and uh, these crown galls are like tumors they can be seen in different parts of the plant but they are mostly seen in the crown of dicot plants and this is induced by agrobacterium tumefaciens now these uh, agrobacterium the tumor causing ability of the agrobacterium is due to the presence of this plasmid which is called Ti plasmid and this Ti plasmid contains DNA which is called as tDNA and this tDNA is around 20 kilobases long. So we will go to the Ti plasmid and the tDNA. So this is the Ti plasmid which is a part of agrobacterium tumefaciens and uh, this uh, has got a particular region. Here you can see this is the tDNA region. So this is the tDNA region and when an agrobacterium infects a host plant cell from this from the Ti plasmid of agrobacterium this tDNA part is transferred into the host plant genome. So the bacterium is able to transfer a part of its plasmid into the host plant genome. So it is doing the work of a genetic engineer because it is cutting a part of its genome and it is transferring it into the genome of a plant cell and there it is getting incorporated. So that is why agrobacterium is called as nature's genetic engineer. So that part of the Ti plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens which is transferred to the host cell genome is called as tDNA which is about 20 kilobases long. And what happens when tDNA is incorporated into the host cell genome? So now the plant genome is manipulated by this bacterium by the incorporation of tDNA. So what change it causes to the plant cell? When the bacterial tDNA is inserted into the plant cell genome, it will trigger the overproduction of two plant growth hormones. They are cytokinin and auxin. So what happens? There will be increased proliferation of the plant parts and it will lead to the formation of tumors. And this proliferated tissue or the tumor, it will provide the bacterium with certain amino acids usually opines are the amino acids which are produced in this plant plant tumor which is induced by agrobacterium tumefaciens. So otherwise the plant is not, not you normally synthesizing it but once the tDNA is incorporated it will lead to the overproduction of opines in the uh, plant cells. And uh, what are these opines meant for? These opines are an important carbon and nitrogen source for this agrobacterium tumefaciens so that it can live at the expense of the host plant. So to accomplish this task or to get this work done, it is actually manipulating the genome of a plant cell. So it is doing the work of a genetic engineer. That is why it is called as nature's genetic engineer. And therefore, this uh, Ti plasmid of agrobacterium contains all genes which are required to establish the tumor in the plant and it contains genes to bring about this biosynthesis of opines and it is also having genes for getting itself integrated into the host cell genome and that is why it is called as nature's genetic engineer. And now we come to its use as a vector 
for recombinant DNA technology experiments. So what researchers do is that they have uh, isolated this TI plasmid from agrobacterium tumefaciens and they have incorporated some changes in this plasmid so that it can be used as a vector for transferring foreign genes into dicot plant cells. So what they do is, what they did was the TI plasmid uh, was uh, manipulated or it was engineered in such a way that the tumor causing genes were removed. The opine synthesis genes were removed. So there will be no induction of tumor in the host cell. And instead, uh, the selectable marker genes and foreign genes will be incorporated into them. Because in any recombinant DNA experiment, there should be marker genes. Because we want to know whether our vector has entered into the host cell with the foreign DNA. So that is the purpose of a marker. So mm, while engineering TI plasmid as a vector, the researchers have removed the opine synthesis genes as well as the tumor causing genes and instead they were replaced with mark marker genes uh, which are usually antibiotic resistance genes. And apart from that, they also contain ORI, the sequences for transfer of the TI plasmid into the plant genome and the multiple cloning sites for insertion of foreign gene because there should be restriction enzyme cutting sites. Then only we can incorporate the foreign DNA. That is how we use any vector. Any vector will be cut first. Then the foreign DNA will be added to it or it will be ligated to it and then only it will be transferred to the host cell. So here we are using TI plasmid as a vector. So we should have provision for cutting it and that is why there will be restriction enzyme cutting sites. There will be ORI so that it can replicate by its own. And now, now into the tDNA of the TI plasmid, the foreign genes can be incorporated and now the uh, plasmid can be used to infect plant cells on a culture medium containing growth factors and the selectable antibiotic because we have used the antibiotic resistance gene as the marker and only uh, those cells which harbor tDNA can grow in the presence of the antibiotic. So that is how we uh, generate uh, this, agrobacter this agrobacterium as a vector because it is even though we call the TI plasmid as vector, um, we want to we will uh, allow this agrobacterium tumefaciens bacterium with the TI plasmid to enter into the host cell. So first of all, we have to create agrobacterium tumefaciens cells which contain the modified plasmid vector. So that is why we are having the antibiotic resistance gene. So what we do is we have the TI plasmid, we cut it with the desired restriction enzyme, we insert the foreign gene and then we uh, make it enter into agrobacterium tumefaciens cells and there we can select which all cells have taken up this modified plasmid through the antibiotic resistance gene. And now, now the uh, agrobacterium which is containing the vector plasmid with the foreign DNA is ready. Now what we do? So we will co-infect or we will co-culture agrobacterium with the that plant cell into which we want to transfer our foreign gene. Suppose we want to insert a particular amino acid synthesizing gene into a plant cell. So for which we will incorporate this foreign gene that codes for the amino acid with TI plasmid. We will insert it into agrobacterium and then we will co-culture this agrobacterium with those plant cells into which we want to transfer the amino acid synthesizing gene. So that is what is called as co-culture and thus this agrobacterium will enter into our plant cell. It will insert its tDNA into our plant cell and the tDNA contains our foreign gene instead of the tumor inducing gene and the opine synthesizing gene. So there will be no induction of tumor but our foreign gene will be expressed in the plant cell. So here we are using the uh, natural ability of agrobacterium tumefaciens for our purpose or its ability or its capability as a natural genetic engineer is being uh, utilized in this process. 
so here we are using a disarmed pathogen because agrobacterium was a pathogen we have removed its weapons what were its weapons the ability to synthesize opines and the ability to induce tumors those genes were removed so its weapons were removed and instead we inserted our desired gene for example the amino acid coding gene so that is why it is called as a disarmed pathogen and this agrobacterium tumefaciens is considered to be one of the most common vectors used for transferring foreign genes into dicot plant cells and what are the uh, uh, and how we co culture the plants with the agrobacterium with the modified agrobacterium you can use independent plant cells or you can use calluses of plants Mm, uh, meristematic cells of plants etc can be used for co-culturing with agrobacterium and later they can be uh, taken into tissue culture uh, grown into plantlets and then taken to uh, for growth outside so the plant will be expressing this new gene it will be producing this particular amino acid uh, which is coded by the gene we inserted into the plant cell through the ti plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens now there is one more type of agrobac one more species of agrobacterium called as agrobacterium rhizogenes which has got the same property here it has got a ri plasmid which is called as root hair inducing plasmid so this is also a kind of pathogen which is infecting dicot plants where it is not inducing a tumor but instead it is inducing the formation of root hairs there will be proliferation of uh, root hairs profound growth of root hairs will be induced in the uh, host plant cell and that is all due to a plasmid uh, present in agrobacterium rhizogenes which is called as the ri plasmid so nowadays uh, we also use this ri plasmid as a vector for uh, genetic engineering purposes in uh, dicot plant cells it is uh, in certain cases it is considered to be more easy than using the ti plasmid of agrobacterium tumefaciens and we can regenerate the plant species into whole plants so uh, these are the two types of plasmids the ti plasmid and ri plasmids uh, which are derived from agrobacterium but used for gene transfers into plant cells especially the dicot plant cells